What's going down y'all? Welcome back to another video. If I'm wearing the same thing as last video, I'm just filming these intros back to back on the same day. I don't really care. But today's video, we are doing another dry shave on a Hispanic woman. I don't want to say she's extremely hairy because last time you guys got on me for using that term. So you guys will see a dramatic amount of hair and dead skin coming off the face. So if you like the video, leave a like, subscribe, comment. Let's get into it. And like always, we are going to start out with the pre-shave treatment. Now, for me personally, I prefer to use rubbing alcohol. Um, I've been using it since I started cutting hair. I've used it for my personal use, for my clients, for females or women. I prefer the term women. I, I use it on women, men, myself. Uh, rubbing alcohol is drying and that's the point of me using it. If we're gonna dry shave, you want the skin as clean and as dry as possible. Now rubbing alcohol works, there's toners, you guys can use peroxide or facial scrubs to dry out the skin. Whatever you guys wanna do, just get that skin dry, get it clean, so there's nothing getting in the way of the razor and the hair. So as far as her actual hair on her face, she wasn't extremely hairy. You guys have seen a lot worse on this channel. So her face was noticeably hairy, but it was nothing out of the norm. It wasn't super crazy or nothing like that. But what I want you guys to notice is when I shave under her sideburn, it kind of creates like a boxed shape look. It kind of looks like too masculine. So what I do is you guys will see at the end of this shaving portion, I grab some eyebrow shears, a little miniature scissors, and I kind of thin out her sideburns to make it look a little bit more natural, make it look cute again. So it's not so harsh. And um, I think that's very important, especially around the sideburn area. That's kind of noticeable, especially if women uh, pin their hair back. You guys can see their sideburns, their baby hair. So I go back in, thin out this sideburn area, make it look natural, make it look cute again. And once again, I hate to reiterate myself in every video, but working around the chin area for anyone that's new to this channel, be careful if you're gonna try this on your chin or somebody else's chin. There's all different type of shapes and sizes when it comes to chins, but not only that, the skin is super supple, it's super tender and soft, so make sure you pull the skin tight. Be meticulous, well, I'm using big words today. Be meticulous in every stroke, be mindful, uh, take your time because the chin can cause some problems. You don't want to cut nobody's chin, so be careful. So this part of the face, it was so, I wanna say amazing, but it was super satisfying because usually when I do these type of shaves, the hair just kind of falls off the face. You guys can see it coming off the skin, but this in particular, the hair was sticking to the tip of the razor. So instead of the hair just falling off or you guys can actually see it, 
notice closely after each stroke how much hair is building up on the tip of the razor and it just it was so i was like damn i thought your face was hairier than this and then i look at the razor and sure enough Now, I did talk to you guys about being careful around the chin area, but when it comes to the mustache area, please do not cut your client because one, it just, it's a sensitive area in general. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten a bump or a pimple on the top of your lip. It's, it's painful. I don't, it's just a super sensitive area. So imagine taking a straight razor and cutting your top lip open. It wouldn't be pleasant. Um, so be careful, pull the skin, tell your client to tuck your top lip in, tuck the bottom lip in, be careful. Uh, because yeah, if you cut your top lip, it's going to hurt. And this is the part I was talking about. I'm just grabbing some miniature eyebrow shears and thinning out this sideburn, make it look a little bit more feminine or <laughs> uh, make it look a lot more natural. So moving on to the post shave treatment, we are going to disinfect the area. This is very important, especially to protect yourself. If you're providing the service, you never want anyone to break out and then come back tripping on you. No, I cleaned your face. It's completely disinfected. Um, and not only that, it wipes away any of the dead skin or hair that I might've left behind. Um, and yeah, next we are going to use some Heritage Store Rose Water Facial Spray. Uh, this is literally the most natural facial spray I have ever used. It's literally purified water and hydro essential rose. Super calming, super refreshing, but it also adds natural moisture. And when it comes to moisturizing the skin, I've been rocking with Burt's Bees Moisturizer. It's super lightweight, it's light in consistency, so it's not gonna clog the pores. Your face doesn't feel all oily and greasy afterwards. Just a light, coat of protection and moisture um and that's really it i'm going to use the j stone roller to kind of calm down the skin relax the muscles uh leave let the client get up feeling relaxed and refreshed um and the j stone roller is perfect for that so if you haven't invested one in yourself invest in one for your clients if you're doing this type of service um but that's really it hopefully you guys did enjoy leave a like if you did subscribe if you're new i told you if i'm going to be on lockdown with nothing to do these videos are going to come at you so hopefully you guys are enjoying and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh.